Well, good afternoon. Thank you so much for showing up to our information session for our University of Minnesota programs that we have approved here at Ohio State. Um, I'm Rebecca McMahon. I'm the Education Abroad Specialist for this program, which means that I'm kind of the, the contact here at Ohio State um, that can help you kind of walk through the process on our end. And I'm joined by Paula, who is our colleague over at the University of Minnesota. She's going to share um, about the programs that we have approved through Ohio State um, on, their, on their platform. And then also I have a past participant from this past spring, Damon Simon, who will also be able to share a little bit about his experience. So um, I am going to just kind of back out and I'll be available for questions. If you want to put questions in the chat or the Q&A, um, I can handle those or um, feed them to our presenters. And then I'll be back in a bit to share a little bit more about the Ohio State side of things. So. All yours, Paula. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to start by sharing a link to what I have here in my background, which is my virtual office. My name is Paula Hader, and I am an Associate Institutional Relations Director at the Learning Abroad Center, which is part of the University of Minnesota. We are the General Study Abroad Office for the University of Minnesota campus, and we work with various institutional partners including the Ohio State University throughout the United States to provide certain programs. So I'm going to talk to talk about a, a few of the programs that are approved or all of the programs that are approved at OSU today. So if any participants would like to get to this pretty fun outdoor office that I have um, in the future, the link in the chat is there and there's lots of things to click on like student experience videos, um, different program pages. The presentation that I'm going to be doing is actually there on the little laptop icon. And you can leave your information if you click on the pen and paper, scholarship info, you can figure it out. So um, I just wanted to share that. And if you have any questions and you wanna contact me in the future, you can click on my little Bitmoji person waving at you um, or the email icon. So let's get it. Okay. Can everyone, can you see that okay, Danny? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Um, well, like I say, we work with um, the OSU on various programs, and there are a lot of different advisors that you can talk to, um, including Rebecca, about these different programs today. So if you're ever curious, you can um, click on the links that are in my little office uh, or go to the OSU website in order to um, talk to the right people about each of these programs. These are the approved programs that um, on your campus for your students and we've had students go on all these programs in the past. Uh, they all are a little bit different, but some of them have sort of commonalities between each other. So um, the first program is in France. It's in Montpellier, France. It's called Language and Culture in Southern France. That's the name of the, the new name of the program and that's formerly known as Study Abroad in Montpellier. We also have the MSID programs, that's short for Minnesota Studies in International Development. And all four of those programs have a similar model uh, and that is taking place in Ecuador, Kenya, Senegal, and Thailand, where Danny did his program. And we also have our Morocco program, which take, takes um, place in Fez, Morocco, and that's called Arabic Language and Culture. So I don't know if some of this is kind of obscured on the recording, but the, the France program has many different tracks, but our semester long France program in Montpellier, you do have a uh, language prerequisite. So there's an intermediate track and an advanced track. Montpellier itself is a very unique French city. It is not Paris. It is not a large cosmopolitan area. It's a lot more accessible. I really enjoyed visiting Montpellier myself. I'm from a smaller town 
I went to a smaller institution in Minnesota, not the University of Minnesota. I'm kind of um, more keen on places that are more walkable, uh, a little bit uh, more open per se, rather than a little bit more intimidating, larger locations. So I really think that Montpellier as a city and the program itself makes a really um, close experience with French culture and sort of a normal French way of life um, pretty possible for students. But there are two tracks. You can uh, do the intermediate track, have two semesters of French under your belt before you go to the program, and then you'll be studying mostly language courses at our study center located in Montpellier. And the study center is pretty centrally located, so you're going to be going to classes there um, and then going about your life, either going to your apartment that you'll be staying in or your homestay. Uh, there are lots of extracurricular activities, but you'll be really focusing on that language and cultural learning um, aspect of the program. On the advanced track, you should have already completed four semesters of French before the program, and that advanced track allows you to access uh, at least one course in a local university, which we have a really close relationship with. So most of your courses will be taking uh, place in our center, but you also have at least one course at Paul Valéry or University of Montpellier, two very different uh, but close by uh, institutions that are there in the city. And at, on those campuses, you can access a wide range of courses from liberal arts, sciences, engineering, business, psychology, you name it. They have a, a very large um, offering and it's accessible to international students like you will be. There's also an internship option in the advanced track which in, you could have an internship where you're using your French um, every day and in one of those areas of study. There also are some options for internships in English that are, that are available, although those are a little bit more limited. We also have a summer program in Montpellier, um, and that would be more for students who are at the beginning level all the way to the advanced. So during the semester, you won't be able to go in at 101, but you certainly can during the summer. There are two housing options currently in Montpellier. So homestays are the preferred option for a lot of students because no matter what their French level, they want to be able to have a home cooked meal, you know, be able to practice their language and um, they want that, that sort of experience. But there also are students who choose to uh, a more apartment living where they're living with other international students more centrally in the city. Um, so we have those two options. Montpellier is our longest running program, which is really saying something. Uh, since the 70s, this program has been running. It's really deeply rooted and our staff there, our resident director has been working there for over 30 years. They're very um, passionate about this program, passionate about you getting a real um, experience, a French experience like you want. Um, so there's lots of resources for, for students on that program. Really lovely. So like I said, um, another set of programs that's approved at The Ohio State University is our MSID programs, or our MSID programs. So Ecuador, in Quito, Ecuador, Nairobi, Kenya, uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand, and Dakar, Senegal. So even though all of these programs are in different cities, different continents perhaps, um, different parts of the world, culturally these places are vastly different, but the MSID model, which was developed in the early 80s, is kind of applied over all of these locations. And this little graphic on the screen shows kind of what a usual semester looks like. So the first week is orientation. That can look like a lot of things. You arrive on site. Um, you kind of are getting used to what it means to, to live in this new place. These locations are sort of more off the beaten path than you know, the Paris's or the Madrid's. Um, um, sort of less commonly traveled. So I'm really preparing you for what's ahead of you. Then there's a seven week classroom phase where you're taking the majority of your coursework throughout the, the semester. And then the second half of, of the experience is an internship or research opportunity. So 
that can be in a variety of different areas of study, and I'll talk about that a little bit more um, later, but it all is culminated in you coming back to the site and doing your final seminar, doing your final uh, presentations, finishing up things, um, and then preparing to return home to the United States. So all of these programs have homestays. It's just a pillar of the program. Um, and the internships that are in research opportunities that are offered, they are really focusing, because it's a development program, an international development program, um, it's really focusing on more grassroots um, initiatives of local NGOs that are already doing work to um, better their communities, doing really exciting pro projects. And our students are able to really uh, access that work and and put forth the knowledge that they do have in order to do some really exciting things. So um, that's a big component of the program. There's also language prerequisites for two of them. So Ecuador, Spanish, there'll be four semesters needed. And then Senegal has, a, they actually speak French in Senegal and Wolof, but uh, uh, has a French prerequisite for that program. And all of the coursework in those programs are taught in that language in Spanish or in French. There also are some language pre-sessions. So if you don't quite have the level of language that you'd like before you go, you could always um, take a, a summer or a winter break program a little bit before um, to have a leg up on the language that you'd like um, to, to know a little bit better before the program. And I won't go into all of this, but I'm gonna let Danny speak in a second here. But each of these sites has a very unique component because they're very different places. Um, Ecuador, I was able to visit there last year in February. And I, me as a Spanish speaker and as a Latin American studies person, that was one of my concentrations when I was an undergrad. Um, I really loved the indigenous focus of Ecuador about, the, about indigenous knowledge, indigenous um, initiatives in the community that could be what a lot of um, a, a students' studies and research or internship could be focusing on. Um, and, and I haven't been to the other sites exactly. I've been to Thailand before, but um, you can kind of read a few things about each of these sites, but I'm going to let Danny kind of take it away and talk about his experience in Chiang Mai, on site, um, at our center, and, and so forth. All right. Um, well, hello, everyone. I'm Danny Simon. I'm a senior at OSU, uh, majoring in international studies and minoring in Hebrew. Um, and this past spring semester, I was studying in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Um, so I, I was only there until mid-March. Uh, in between the classroom phase and the internship research phase there was a week long spring break and then in the middle of that spring break we were forced to um, come back to the host city Chiang Mai and then return home so I can't really speak about the internship phase too much or the final uh, the final seminar phase but I'll just go into the the orientation the orientation was wonderful uh, we were taught by the program director who's American. He he's been in Thailand for about 20 years with his wife. He started this uh, program on his, on his own with his wife. And uh, they have this beautiful brand new campus. I, I think it's like three years old. And it's made out of recycled shipping containers. And uh, so that's where we do all of our learning. And it, it's really wonderful. Also there, on, on campus, you can find uh, 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 like a cafe and a CrossFit gym, which um, is included in the tuition. You don't have to pay extra to attend classes like that. They have a full-time staff available, so it's really great. Um, so for the orientation, we took a few uh, classes in Thai really quickly just to on the first day just to get ourselves oriented um, with what what we needed to know immediately and then and then after orientation we uh, 
split up into our classes. And so the classes that we, we took were uh, introductory Thai uh, and international development. And then within international development, you could, uh, you split up into different tracks. And I was on the social services track. Additionally, there are uh, education, entrepreneurship, agriculture. I think that's it. I think those, those are the four tracks available. And it was really uh, wonderful uh, learning about all of these different, uh, different tracks in Thailand. So for social services, my class, it was me and one other student and the teacher. So we were working talking almost one one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one with the teacher and we were going on field trips and we we're learning about like public health and it was just it was very very interesting and youth development so that that was a very interesting class additionally thai, uh, the introductory thai language class uh is three hours a day four days a week and in the beginning of the thai class earlier in the semester we as a as a class we discussed that one day's worth of Thai class of three hours is the equivalent of three or is the equivalent of a, a half a year language class in America we were learning so much and I, I, I could just rant on and on and on about Thai class because that also the, the teacher it was one teacher and five students and uh, no English was spoken during the entire Thai class. And by the end of the semester, or by the end of the classroom phase, uh, we were able to have a pretty basic, good, good, nice, nice flowing conversation all in Thai, which was very impressive. <laughs> I was impressed with myself and with my classmates. Um, additionally, historical and political context. That was also a very interesting class where we learned about the history of the the uh, country and how they how Thailand interacts with the different countries around them and how Chiang Mai itself interacted with uh, formerly known as the Lana Kingdom and uh, just the history in general and the politics surrounding Thailand. So that was very interesting. Lastly. The internship, which I wasn't able to take a take part of, uh, I was able to find out uh, what my internship would have been, but I just missed it by a few days of being able to do it. Uh, I would I was planning on working for the Bondek Foundation, which literally translates to the child's house or child's home, and basically. Uh, when migrant workers come from different countries in Southeast Asia, they, to work on construction, they bring their families with them. Now, since the construction workers in Thailand are not paid a, a fair wage, they don't have enough uh, money to pay for like normal housing. So what the construction companies do that they work for is they build these uh, slums, basically these, construction camps is what they're called and out of uh, recycled construction materials and they're terrible condition and there are children everywhere and it's just really terrible conditions that no one should be living in. So what this organization does, Bondek Foundation, is they remove the children out of the, the, uh, the camps during the daytime and they teach them the Thai language and they teach them there's normal things that kids should be learning about, uh, like common common skills, like common sense, um, and basically it's a I don't know what how many steps there are, but it's a it's a process that at the end of the when they graduate from the program, they're able to enroll in normal Thai school. So I was supposed to be interacting with uh, the counselors who are going to interact with these ties um, with the migrant workers and their families. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> that um, sounds amazing. 
and yeah, it must be a little bit uh, difficult to talk about, but but that's kind of an example of of how um, it could it could really apply to real community needs. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and definitely. It was, that it was very that internship can't. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah, that internship um, can't take place in another like Ecuador. Like like they don't have the same um, issues and hurdles and development um, programs that are happening on the ground. Uh, each site is is very different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the stuff that I was doing, you you couldn't find that in Kenya or in Senegal. Like that was very Thailand, Chiang Mai specific, and I was very grateful for that. While the uh, while this while the program is set up and similarly in each of the four different um, countries that it's being um, taught in, uh, I I was really glad I chose Thailand. And I definitely learned a lot from the time that I was there. Cool. And um, the different tracks that you were speaking of, were you in sustainability? Is that your? Is that your so there, there was an there was another one that was social services. Social it basically oh, in, um, in, encapsulated all of the entrepreneurship, health, human rights, and sustainability. Uh, at least once a week. So we had the class three days a week. And at least once a week, we were either in a class with another uh, group of people with another track, or we were on a field trip learning about stuff like on the ground. We were in hospitals. We were uh, we, we were learning about agriculture, like at on farms. So it was very totally. interesting. Totally. And you had mentioned the tracks, and we did we did have a renaming of the social services as human rights. So that's oh, why the okay. slide, if you, I hope you're not, you weren't confused, but okay. um, just it kind of encapsulates a little bit more. We've consolidated just to give students a little bit better idea of, of what they'll, they'll be doing so they can kind of see themselves um, in the different themes is what they'll be um, talked about um, from now on. And Thank I so believe that the MSID program just got to Thailand today or yesterday. So I was very excited to see that for this semester. Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that the, that at least uh, if there are students on the ground, they, they wouldn't have come from, from University of Minnesota programs or oh. from the U.S. Um, oh, so maybe they were the SDS students. Yes, so, right. This, so, okay. Do you, can, do you mind if I speak on that a little bit? Go ahead. Yep. Um, so, ISDSI, which is the name of the campus, they they are home to the MSID program and to SDS, which is a direct enroll program through ISDSI, and we are in all of the different classes together. They are they do different classes, but we uh, we're, we share a campus and we go through orientation together, and they become like peers when we are right. there. So even though it's not a, a development specific program like like this one is or it doesn't have the same model it is kind of like a, a cohort in a, in a little community there cool i i am cognizant of time but but thank you so much danny for sharing about your experience i would love like i'd love to hear more about your homestay and all these things but mm -hmm. um i hope that we give um anyone listening to this recording and anyone attending a uh, good picture about at least one of the one of the sites that's approved um, for the MSIDs. So, for example, uh, under these new themes, you can see four different uh, international development sites. I mean, international development course options is what I meant to say. Um, so each site is a little bit different, and you can kind of you know, just a quick overview here. I won't read every single one, but you can tell that in Ecuador. Um, it's like, for example, the health track will be focusing on public health and traditional Andean medicine. So that's specific to Ecuador. Um, they're taking that health track and, and um, teaching something more along the lines of exactly what uh, the realities of, of that area and that region of the world. And the same could be said for Thailand. Um, humans, animals, the environment, uh, and, and so forth. So there are different, on our website, you can see the different um, options. And this is just for one of the courses, that international development course. But you can kind of see how students um, can go off in their theme, in their track, 
Um, and then, yes, they do end up coming together for the language and, and kind of weaving in and out with each other throughout the, throughout the semester. One last program that I'm going to talk about before I turn it over to Rebecca uh, is our Fez Morocco program, Arabic Language and Culture. Um, it takes place in Fez and it is at Alif, which is the Arabic Language Institute in Fez. And it is, the city itself uh, is quite interesting. I haven't been in Fez personally, but I hear that the second that you get there, this site is kind of like a, not an assault, I don't want to say to the senses, but there's just so much, so much going on. You could be in the middle of the Medina, which is sort of the old city, old walled city within Fez that is ancient. And there are markets and there are, um, there's noise and there's smells and you really, uh, people who um, are ready and who are looking for this experience and who are looking for um, this kind of Moroccan experience, they, really can sink into this very um, different sort of study abroad experience. Um, I have a video that was on my, uh, it's a student experience video that was on my little virtual office that I had shared. Um, and, uh, or it's on our YouTube page, the Learning Abroad Center, University of Minnesota, uh, our YouTube channel. But it's a, a student experience and she talks about her experience um, in the Medina and how she kind of uh, recommends that students choose their home stay in the Medina because there are two options. Um, even though the new part of the city of Fez, I wouldn't say it's exactly new. Um, it's, it's probably, I, I don't know how old it is, but it was built during the, the French um, colonization of, of Morocco. So it's certainly not new, like built in the last couple of years, um, but they do call it the Ville de Velle, the new city. Um, this program specifically is focusing on, like the name suggests, Arabic language and culture. So you can go into this program sort of like uh, Danny was talking about the Thailand program. It does have a commonality there. You can go into it with no language um, experience. And it is for a student who is really looking to um, end the program with a considerable amount of Arabic. So you go, you can go in at 101 and take two language courses and then take a, another course that is in, in various topics. I mean, you could choose, uh, but that course is taught in English. Um, some of the examples of, of topics taught are, you know, Arabic newspapers, media, literature, Moroccan society and culture. And those courses are also offered in Arabic for advanced students, but they won't have you take that if you're a 101 uh, student. So this program also has homestays um, as part of the program, and that is key for the, the Arabic language acquisition. You can kind of see the pictures on the side there. The, the center itself is very beautiful, um, sort of quintessential Moroccan architecture, um, and there are very small class sizes like you would see maybe at one of the MSID sites. Um, so it's very personal, the, the, the instruction and the level of language, the, the progression is kind of um, a cooperative, uh, very personalized sort of experience. And this program happens during the fall, spring or summer. So those programs are gonna look differently uh, depending on summer or semester, but that's generally how it, how it works. And during the semester, I kind of, talked about your different required options, but you have to take the language and you do have to take at least one English taught, taught elective in one of those subjects that I mentioned. And there also is a direct, directed research pre-credit option um, for more advanced students um, and those Arabic top courses like I mentioned. We do have a one credit online optional global identity course to all students, no matter which of these programs you choose to go on. Um, this is an option of free uh, class, a free course that is meant to help you through your, from pre-departure to being in your experience to post um, to returning to the United States. This is a course that's basically a study abroad course to help you put 
your experience in context, prepare yourself for a future career, be able to, to speak to your experience, develop um, intercultural and interpersonal skills. That's what this, this little course is. So I just want to kind of ping that uh, in anyone's brain. If you're gonna be doing this program, then, or any of these programs, you could choose to take this free opportunity to kind of gain some new skills and be able to use your study abroad experience kind of to the max. And I'll wrap up now. Um, my advice to everyone is to read program handbooks. If you're thinking about going on these programs, these are sort of important graphics on our website to look for, the apply now button, the visa information, program handbook. Um, also, uh, because we are, we do have University of Minnesota students going on the program. We have two sides to our website and it's key for you to uh, remember that non-University of Minnesota student is kind of your title. So there's a non-U of M uh, student side to the program listings and so that you just go, don't get um, on the wrong side of the website. I wanna highlight that. And you also can see the full course lists of all the programs that I, that I mentioned today on our website. And I will turn it over to Rebecca now. Great, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, I just wanna take a couple of minutes to go over some of the, probably the top three kind of questions or concerns or considerations that you'll, you'll wanna have um, for going on one of these programs as an Ohio State student. So the first thing to remember, um, which I think we've said several times, but it's very important is that um, only the approved programs are available to you as an Ohio State student. So there are other programs that University of Minnesota offers that are not approved by Ohio State. So if you are kind of poking around their website, you might see more, more popping up than you see on ours, but it's important that you make sure that you stick to the programs that we covered today, because those are the ones that are approved. And what that is going to mean is that you will Kind of maintain your enrollment at Ohio State while you're abroad, but you're also going to bring back graded academic credit for the courses that you take. Um, and so there's kind of a process for that. So there are some pre-approved credits and then that for others, there's kind of a credit evaluation process that you'll go through to kind of figure out what um, the equivalent course is here. So I think that's something that I won't go into too much detail here, but you should definitely be speaking with your specialist and your OSB contact um, to kind of go over that process is a great um, thing to discuss in a, an advising session. And we also have a tutorial on our website um, as well. And so reach out, reaching out to um, either me for any of those MSIB programs to Elizabeth Angerman or Louise Yehui. I will kind of point out, um, I'm the contact for the Thailand program. So um, you don't need to reach out to the CFA yes person. Um, it's actually changed. And so um, it's not the same person that was in the in the PowerPoint, but I am happy and able to answer the questions about that as well. Um, the other thing to remember is that you are going to be doing two applications. You're doing one for University of Minnesota, but also one for Ohio State. So you're going to access our application through the educationabroad.osu.edu website. And both applications are going to be due by the Ohio State deadline. So for spring semester, that will be October 1st. For summer, it's February 1st. And for autumn, it is March 1st. And so that might be a little different than, again, what you're seeing on the University of Minnesota website. But you need to stick to our timeline just so that that can kind of get you in the process and what we need from you in time. Um, and the other big question I always get is about funding and payments. So um, one thing to remember, like I said, you'll be enrolled at Ohio State, but you are not going to be charged Ohio State tuition. Um, the only thing you pay to, our, to OSU is going to be $1.50 a day at this point in time for the international insurance. Um, and then the full program fee will, will be paid directly to the University of Minnesota. Um, and so typically students are able to access their scholarships grants loans through the university. Um, and there's a process for that, but I definitely point students towards the Buckeye Link office just to make sure that your specific aid package is going to work like we expect it to. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the big pieces on our end. So I'll open it up now if you have any questions um, for any, any of us. And we have three really good perspectives here, so we'll, we're happy to answer any questions that you have.
And I had seen one come in and I and I'm not able to open them, but were you able to see that Rebecca? I, yes, someone was asking about where the recording will be and I oh, will be posting that onto the brochure pages on our website. So I sent the link um, in that question and answer box. But if you were to search for any of these programs on the website, it'll be under under that page. Certainly. When I do on the OSU uh, program search on that page, uh, I usually, in order to quickly get the list of programs that are approved, I just type in Minnesota, even though you're not going to Minnesota, you can go to Morocco, <laughs> France, or, or any of the MSID sites. Um, I just type in Minnesota and then all of them do pop up. Yes, um, that's, that's my advice there. That's right. The link I sent has that search already done, so you'll you'll be able to click right into it. Or if you want to just go back to the website, um, I will put our website and my email in the chat so that you have those as well. Educationabroad.osu.edu and then my email is nickmun.8. But you can also access my stuff page through website as well. I'm happy to speak with anyone who's interested. <laughs>